Okay, injury front, uh, Greg Newsom is out this week. He's dealing with a calf injury. He's week to week. He will not go on IR. Uh, not practicing today, Jed and JC. Uh, big challenge this week. Uh, really good football team. Uh, they very easily could be 3-0. They went on the road uh, and played a good Cincinnati Bengals team and, and had it at the end. Uh, had a fumble, almost in field goal territory. Week two, they go to Arizona, who's undefeated. Uh, had a field goal that they missed late in the game. Then they go home, and in their first game, I thought they played lights out. So big challenge, uh, really good football players on their roster, really good coaches, uh, and it's a tough place to play. So we're going to have to be about our business. With that, I'll take any Coach, questions. Coach, when did Greg get hurt exactly? You know? I, I don't know specifically. I don't, not sure. Well, Greedy just, Greedy just step into that. Story, yes. But mm -hmm. I mean, what have you seen out of Greedy in the limited reps that he's had? Well, he's had limited reps in the games, but seeing him a lot of practice, and I think he's done a nice job. You know, going all the way back, Scott, to when he first got back out there and, and worked through it and got his win back, I think you just see a guy who's continuing to get better. Kevin, you coached him, obviously. What uh, stands out to you about uh, Kirk Cousins? Yeah, great football player, uh, has played a lot of football, has seen it all, so he processes really, really quickly. Uh, accurate, um, tough competitor, very smart. Everybody's talking about the homecoming. What do you think about Brady going back to New England? Huh. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Not very good, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. You want to follow that up? With yeah, what are, what are you? <laughs> There's got to be some emotions for you, though, Kevin, going back to a place where it began, where your kids were born, et cetera. Yeah, I would tell you, Tom, it's obviously a, a special place. Had uh, you know, a great time there, treated great by the organization, you know, the, from the ownership to the coaches, uh, staff. Uh, so really have good friends there. Um, that being said, it's a really big game, and they're a good team, so that has our full attention. Who are your kids rooting for? The, the, the Brownies. <laughs> yeah. Does that, like, take some arm twisting? No, no. <laughs> no. Are, are you and Coach Callahan content with playing Wills through this, or does his film show that maybe he needs a break? Yeah, I think I'm comfortable with what we're doing, Tony. Uh, the, the kid is working really, really hard. He's staying into it, and even if he's not practicing today, he's staying into it. Uh, and I think he's just uh, he's, he's dealing with an injury, which is really the nature of the National Football League oftentimes for a bunch of different players. So I think he's doing a nice job. Kevin, back to, back to uh, Minnesota. Uh, you, you were fortunate to be able to spend a lot of time in one place, which, as you know, coaches, mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of rare. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look back at, uh, on it, you know, what are some ways that that, that plays – that environment molded you, you know, as a young coach to, to where you are today? Yeah, you're right, Jake. I was fortunate to, to be able to be there uh, for a long time and saw a bunch of different coaches come through, some really good coaches from and varying philosophies. I'd tell you that was probably the best thing for me to, to learn under different systems uh, helped me uh, grow as a coach. Did that give you the, the ability to, to pick and choose what you think fits you would want to do when you got your opportunity? I think that's ultimately what all coaches do. Uh, we we kind of sit back when, when we're the low man on the totem pole and be very quiet and take notes. And mm -hmm. and uh, and then ultimately, y you just try to be a sponge and learn as much as you can uh, in, in those moments. Kevin, what were your duties in that, kind of that first year for you? Uh, a bit everything? Anything and everything. Mind? Yeah, you name it. I, I think, you know, we have – I think in a football operation, and it's true here for sure, we, we have a lot of people that do a lot of different jobs and, and you don't get much credit for it. And and the, everybody, what, those jobs are as important to, to any job when you're talking about winning on Sunday. So, uh, you know, that's where I would tell you, um, I'm no different than a lot of people in, in terms of when you get that start, you start at the bottom and you just gotta work really hard. How does, does, the, how does the attention you have to pay to Dalvin Cook open up the passing game? Yeah, he's a great, great player. Uh, he can do everything. He can catch the ball in the backfield. He, he can run every single type of run there is. Uh, he has a home run threat. Uh, the first guy r very rarely gets him down. Um, so th the work is, is, uh, is definitely cut out for us. He's a great player. Was the Metrodome a tougher place for a visiting team? They're, they're both very loud. We talked about it already uh, this morning with, with the team. It's, it's a glass building, and, and the, the noise reverberates in there. It, it, it'll be the loudest, uh, likely the loudest uh, place that we play this year. Do you think it's louder, as loud as the Metrodome? Yeah, so I do. Much yeah, I do. You do? Mm -hmm. one, thing, uh, one thing Dalvin said today was that he really appreciated you because you let the guys be themselves.
themselves. Wh wh where did you get that uh, mentality from, uh, whether it was Minnesota or before? How, how did that kind of come about? Just the way we do it, you know. I, you know, Dalvin in particular, there's a bunch of great players there, and, and they're really solid people, and Dalvin's as good as they get. Kevin, what are the challenges and or benefits of playing a team that you're so familiar with? Yeah, I, I think, you know, they know our scheme. Uh, I've been around, obviously, Coach Zim and his defensive scheme, but they're evolving, and I think we, we're, you could probably say the same of us. So uh, it's, it's a really, really sound scheme on both sides of the ball. Uh, they do a great job. Um, Coach Zim is as good as they get, so we got to work that out for us. Do you feel like you have to come up with something new because they know what you do and vice versa for them? I don't think so. I, you know, they have really good football players. I know they have really good coaches. Uh, so the, the challenge is just in that we got to put together a game plan that our guys can understand and go execute uh, and not think too much. I didn't study the depth chart like I probably should have. How many other? Uh, <laughs> don't tell on yourself, Jeff. <laughs> uh, how many of their guys are still there from when you were? Uh, yeah, I mean they have a lot of new players, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, you know, they, they bring in Michael Pierce to get him after he opted out from COVID. Dalvin Tomlinson up front uh, in the back end, Patrick Peterson, Brashawn Breeland, Woods. So there, there's a, a bunch of new faces, certainly uh, on the defensive side of the ball. Having said that, they have some stalwarts uh, that are great football players, uh, whether Harrison Smith, Eric Kendricks, Daniil Hunter. Uh, and then on the offensive side of the ball, I think there's they got really, really uh, explosive playmakers. Um, so a lot of guys have been around, but just making the point that they, they have good players throughout their roster. What, what do you remember about that game in London against the Browns? Or the experience? Yeah, I uh, remember the, the, the team I was coaching on won. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, g love the London experience. I, I think we were slated to go there last year had not uh, that global pandemic. Yeah, I mean, we, we talk so much about culture and, and what you brought here. How much of that did you kind of take from Mike Zimmer and sort of how he does things? Yeah, a ton. Uh, Coach Zim. Uh, just the way he runs his operation is very similar to the way we do things here. Uh, Coach Zim is very, very transparent, very blunt with the players. You know where you with the players and coaches. You know where you stand. He's honest. Uh, he he's, uh, was certainly helpful to me as a young coach. He uh, uh, I, I owe him a great debt of gratitude for how he, you know, number one retained me uh, on the staff when he came in, and then moved me throughout the uh, offensive staff, made me his coordinator. So. Uh, he, he's somebody that was very instrumental in uh, my development. Kevin, are there any new words from him? <laughs> <laughs> There's one in particular. <laughs> yeah. Kevin, I, I know you talked about Gary Kubiak before and his influence, but um, I was wondering, like, you know, there was a possibility of you here in 19 and, and you ended up being in 20. Do you think it just worked out the way it was supposed to? I mean, given that you got that another year of experience, of, you know, play calling and then the, the Kubiak factor? Yeah, I, I firmly believe that things work out uh, the way they should. Um, and just I would speak to the, my whole time there, Nate, was, uh, was uh, very impactful. Uh, you know, it's a, a, a really well-run organization from top to bottom. When you look at their offense, uh, there's not much of a tight end presence, which is a little different than when you were there. Mm -hmm. uh, how does that affect uh, your defensive preparation? Yeah, I think that, you know, they've just had some injuries with Irv Smith out. Um, but it's a really good scheme. I think Clint's doing an outstanding job. Uh, I thought he was really, really good this last game. I got to do some TV watching of it, um, and I thought he was dialing it up. And uh, they're they're versatile. Uh, they may not have, you know, the tight ends like you mentioned that maybe in previous years, uh, but they still have tight ends that they can throw out there. Tyler Conklin being a really good player, so uh, they, they they can get into different personnel groupings, uh, and and they just have a very balanced attack. What's your relationship like with Clint, and do you feel like you guys kind of see the game the same way? Yeah, I mean, Clint's a, a very, very close friend of mine. Uh, obviously, this week, nobody's talking to anybody. Um, but, you know, I just I, I think he's doing a really nice job. Coach Zimmer said that you and Gary hit it off well. Did you have very similar personalities, or you guys kind of cut from the same cloth? <laughs> Yeah, uh, Gary and I are very similar. I don't think Gary's talking to me either this week. Um, but yeah, great, great year. I didn't, you know, it wasn't even a calendar year that I got to spend with Gary, but it was incredibly impactful uh, to me as a coach and as a person. Did you expect to get some grief from Sheldon? 
Yeah, I, I would expect so. Yeah. Do you expect uh, Dalvin Cook to play? I, would, I mean, we're expecting it, yes. Like, Kevin, will you get to do anything, like get to see people that, you, like friends from Minnesota, go out to take everybody out to dinner or something? No, business trip, Scott. Good. Okay. Any restaurant recommendations for Tony? <laughs> I'll, I'll hit you offline. Thanks. <laughs>